Ja, nou, het begon natuurlijk al met die, met die uh, interesse in de elektronica. En daar heb ik eigenlijk een, een, een jaar helemaal in verdiept. En ik heb ook helemaal geen normaal boek meer gelezen, maar alleen maar handleidingen en, en, en keyboard, tijdschriften en zo. En uh, ja, het soort van. Uh, ja, het soort van stukken die je doet, die, die, die merkt toch dat het steeds belangrijker wordt dat je zelf uh, uh, concerten organiseert en, en dat je dat zelf uitvoert. Ja, waarom dat dan? Nou, omdat. Um, ja. Vind je het leuk om te spelen of vind je het anders? Ja, ik vind het. Ik vind, vind je het anders niet genoeg? <laughs> nou, ik zou, ik zou bijvoorbeeld wat ik zelf doe, ik kan het niet opschrijven. Ja, nou, voor anderen. En een soort van beweging die ik wil met die geluiden, die kan ik alleen maar zelf uitvoeren. Ja. Dus, um, en ik vind, het, ik vind het in, in zulke bezittingen stukken maken, dat daar zie ik wel veel uh, toekomst in voor mezelf. Dan. En, en, uh, want dit is de eerste in een serie van, van een live, live elektronica met, het is dan in dit geval basklarinaat, basklarinaat, maar ik wil ook iets later zijn er dingen met een ensemble misschien, of met andere die dan daarmee wat zou doen. Ja, dus het is een soort van productienaam voor het uh, project. Ja, precies. Ja. 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 Goed. Uh, I have a question. Ja. Yeah. Uh, I didn't quite get all of that. No, no. Uh, are you good people? Ja, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And you're not the outside people or the bad people? No, no, no. no. We're, we're very good. <laughs> and why are you so good? Uh, you, you mean the title of so yes. what is it? What does it mean to good people? Oh, it's, it's taken from a, um, a, a poster from one of, um, a friend of uh, George Romero, the filmmaker, and he has an early film which is called The Crazies. And um, it has, it had a, a, the trailer said, uh, why are good people dying? And I thought, well, or we thought, uh, Good people, because it's such an, an empty title, would be a good uh, title for us. Ik heb de geluiden helemaal zelf gemaakt. Ik weet ook globaal de volgorde van de geluiden, maar vooral de ritmische. Uh, plaatsing in de tijd, die doe ik zelf. En die kan ik niet uh, noteren. Dus daar kan ik dan te steunen. Ja, precies. Maar deel is het geïmproviseerd en die wil vast. Ja, de geluiden liggen allemaal vast en ik wil alleen tijdens het spelen zelf, zelf die verbindingen maken. En ja, voorlopig ga ik dat wel opschrijven, want ik wil het zelf uitvoeren. Geef je dat nog aan aan de wasklarinet, ook als jij stopt gaat doen verder? Ja, er zijn, er zijn bepaalde, als je, als je dat hele droge geluid hoort, dan omdat dat een goed soort van uh, mengklank zou kunnen zijn met de basklarinet. Als en ik kijk elkaar even aan en dan weet hij, dan moet hij weer uh, een solo in zitten. En dan weet hij wel waar je moet spelen? Ja, ja nee, voor het helemaal alles in het verder vast. Het zijn alleen die, die open plekken waar je live die samples aan elkaar moet knopen, die niet uh, helemaal op zijn staan. Maar heb je nou ook van tevoren van Ja, nou, behalve die slaptop wist ik wel dat het allemaal zou gaan worden. Ja, Alleen, uh, ja, Peter die speelt heel goed en dan dat, dat hele goede, dat, dat stel je niet zomaar voor. Dat is, uh, ja. Ja, ik Just a quick question for the clarinetist. What do you call that technique that you were using at the beginning with the clicks? Well, it's a, uh, to be exactly, it's not exactly a, a slaptop. People call it now like that, but slaptop is more, even more drier. It's uh, uh, in, in between this, uh, between, between a very um, a middle uh, attack and the slaptop. So this is a very strong attack. The slaptop is without without pitch. Well, real slaptop. No, no, it's with pitch, but uh, it's without uh, uh, duration. Okay. Not yes. How do you produce it? Well, it's um, you, you make a vacuum that you turn and the reed, and then you let it uh, 
jump back. But they have very different uh, gradations. So, it's a very good <laughs> <laughs> piano trio needs uh, not the piano trio from the classical music, but from the jazz music, right. which is piano, uh, uh, double bass, and drums. Yeah. So everybody uh, can remember the, the, the kind of music like Oscar Peterson or uh, Tronis Monte Drubek, I think. The power. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's it. That's a classical piano for your NGS. Now, what is your NGO? Yeah, that's my own music. And maybe uh, the music from uh, my brother who is drumming, Wim Janssen, and uh, the bass player I speak in. So they bring in their own. It's comparable with what Peter did with the score of uh, Hyde. He made, he forms it also a little bit into his own music. Yeah, so that's a jazz. Uh, Especially at a scale, it is the is sound of people using. Well, music it's, yeah. it's not a nice word. But that's a, a kind of jazz approach. Right. Yeah. That you, yeah. that you uh, can interpret more than is uh, usual in classical music. Right. In classical music, you are more fixed to the score, to your part. Yeah. Now, I have listened to this daily uh, theme, the okay? theme. It's not really what's happening tomorrow, but in a sense. Oh, so, so I smell something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now what I, I mentioned is that there is uh, there are bits and parts that you could associate with things that you would think of that you know. Yeah. So my question is, uh, where does imitation, to, to use a very simple word, yeah, yeah. and where begins montage or collage? Yeah. In your case. I in my case, I well, put it very, very simple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's a good way to yeah. do it. Um, let me see. It's not an easy question. Some parts of the tape that you heard are, uh, in fact, I think it's even. It's more imitation. That maybe has to do with a kind of um, it's kind of process. You go through a certain, that's what happens in life anyway. That you uh, before you do something which is your own, you imitate. And uh, some parts of the what we are doing are maybe is, is trying to get uh, um, it's a way of getting rid of it to. First, to imitate it, and then if you understand, if you really understand it, your own. If, if you made it your own, that you you, uh, you can pass it. It's another way than. You first have to eat it. Something like before that. you. I had a nice. Away. I had a nice uh, conversation with uh, Cornelis de Bond uh, one year ago. It's a composer from The Hate, and he was telling. Well, he did this statement that you. You can, and I did the statement that you can just take another road and then you don't have to meet Richard Wagner, for example, if you just take another road. And he didn't agree with that. He, he has the idea that he really wants to break through the... Uh, yeah, he, he wants really to put Richard Wagner away. And then, yeah, he, then he, he can... He's better Well, that's how it is. He's a lot of people. Well, okay. I had the same. I take another road, but then I meet Ben Tristano, for example. Yeah. That's that's my problem then. <laughs> that is. So, uh, it is so as long as you see that's a problem. I don't well, know. no, it's I, not I a problem. I like people, I like meeting people, so. Yeah, it's not a problem. No. But it's, it's uh, uh, you must uh, position yourself. And there are more, more of these kind of people. And one of them is Art Tatum, which I made a new piece, which we play tomorrow. Um, yeah, which is also a real, it's, it's, it's the kind of jazz piano player that I have to meet because I, uh, I am myself, and maybe that sounds, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a virtuoso classical piano player. Right. 
Uh, I'm educated that way. And so uh, I remember Michel Elbert, and maybe that's even the start of this process with Arteta. That he told me a long ago, like 20 years ago, um, he said to me, you, you must uh, uh, study uh, Arteta stuff, because you can manage it. And for me, it's not uh, uh, possible, because it's too difficult. It's just not possible for Misha to, to play in a kind of virtuoso style. So he, he, uh, he yeah, it was a kind of advice to me. And it's always, it was, uh, it was uh, spooking in my back head or something. <laughs> he said, for 20 years, and then it's not that <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm now solving that problem. But well, it's, it's a problem. We just talked about it. But I, I decided that in this context, especially with this trio, um, I decided to, uh, to make a, a whole series of pieces, small pieces, uh, on, uh, with the subject, as subject, uh, old jazz piano players. And then probably there are more following. I'm very interested in Arogano, for example. Mm. And then because he, is, uh, he has a real strange way of slowing down all the time. While the music is not slowing down, and that's his swing, that, and that yeah. his way of swing, and that interests me. Yeah, that I had the idea to uh, that it's possible to to make a concept for a piece which, in fact, doesn't imitate Elgar, but it it gets out this special. It's a kind of uh, a small treatment on this uh, character of his music. So you can forget the harmonic thinking of Arogano, for example, but you just catch out this this way of timing, of his way of timing. And that happens with Artetum too. Well, I'm trying to do it in this piece, because I I do a, a, a real uh, exaggerated uh, version of his... Um, well, there are two poles in Artetum's music which are there all the time, and which is at the same time problematic with his music, I think, because he, he also when he plays slow, it's as fast as possible, at the same time, always. So the both poles are there all the time. And uh, so you can imagine it's difficult to listen to that music, because if you, if a fast piece is uh, finished, he starts the second piece, and you think, well, this is a slow piece maybe, and then it turns out to be the same fast piece as happened before. So uh, that's very strange. I don't know. Yeah, you know Arteta too. I don't yeah. know if you have the same. Yeah, the I same even rehearsal uh, records. Yeah. I like very much. Where you, like, he does in an unpurpose way what you try to do with your trio because he makes the kind of collage of the or he yeah. stops his own music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I would like to ask another thing. When you, but uh, I was not yet finished uh, because this piece is is exaggerating. The poles. So there is a real a static, uh, yeah, static pole, and and a, a very uh, fast pole in the piece. And this fast thing is that these are, and that's the same, that's the collage thing. These are very small bits of uh, artetum solos. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you would call your pieces musical portraits. This this series, I think. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but, uh, okay, now... I made already one of the Yeah, yeah. It's called yeah. Free After, the Vrij Na LP, initial. Hey, you, uh, in the festival, uh, Jazz Piano Trio, North American Piano Trio, Afro American Trio, there is, of course, there's a kind of glue, and that is the harmonic line, and you have an omnibus here, there is the dough bass, who plays the lowest notes of the gluing, the, the, the glue of the Now, when you don't have that, well, that's when you have a problem, I see. Yeah. Because what does the best player do when you start using montage and yeah. collage? Then you don't have, then he cannot glue that's true. as the classical, that's, yeah. in the classical piano. Yeah. But that's the same time. The, the, uh, that's the problem that's on my way if I try to compose for, for that group, or if we try to work out. Uh, uh, several kinds of improvisation. So, and it's not easy. 
No. I, I started, uh, I have a, well, we all have a very good uh, example of a baseless piano trio, and that's, for me, it's Michel Merlberg and Sahan Pinnock. So they decided to do it without a bass player. And uh, I could have tried to do that kind of thing, but that didn't uh, fit to my uh, imagination. That in this sense, because uh, then the glue is missing in the circle. Uh, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I There's no glue at all, and that's. No, but I don't see the comp the comp the comp comparison with Amnesia so very much because I think that's a, that's a, that's a, an orchestra and duo yeah. performance, and it's cost anywhere. But anyway, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's a new description or a new point. But I could have I decided. Well, that you, that you want to, yeah. to fit in, in a certain tradition and that you have that kind of, yeah. uh, like, straight word that or whatever. Yeah, it's a very classical thing. Yeah. But you do it on your own way. Still yeah. paying some, yeah, to some of the, uh, mm -hmm. the people you portrayed. And yeah, you know, especially in, in with this, yeah, I decided to ask Ernst Lien to play the bass, which was a difficult decision because he is a real, in fact, he is a real jazz bass player. And he is, uh, yeah, if you call it stage work, if you are talking about extended techniques, for example, he's not really, well, he, he knows a lot of them. So he's a perfect jazz player for the best Yeah, player. I think so. Good. And then I have, uh, if, then I asked ask him because he is the type of guy. And then uh, we have to learn, and he has to learn too, to, to uh, think in a kind of, of montage way with doing this kind of music, which is not common in the classical piano jazz trio, because then you, you start a piece that you, you just go on with this gluing. Yeah, montage so means cutting. Yeah. How can you cut all three at the same moment? And you have to be very effective. Well, you can you can do you know, there are several ways to do it. It can be in the kind of in the there can be signs. That's the most easy way. If you just yeah. like in classical music, you give a cue, a cue with your head or your hand, and we are doing that sometimes. Then there are kinds of kinds of cues which can be in the music, so that you you hear a bass drum note, which you and the audience hears it too. But uh, the musician knows that it has a different meaning, that it's, it's a kind of switch. Yeah. So the, 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 this note on the bass drum is means that I stop, for example, playing. And then uh, an audience doesn't have to tone that, because it's, it's just a kitchen of music that it happens that way. But uh, that can be a way of, of and that's the, the way I like the most, much more than giving signs, because that has more to do with, with uh, Less to do with music and more with, with yeah, how do you say that? It's kind of dancing, maybe even. If you start to move. Mm -hmm. and for me, it's nicer if, and faster too. It can be f because music itself can be very fast if you do it, uh, yeah, if you know what you're doing. Then you, then you, it's the most fast way of, of how do you say that? You can, uh, if you work with theater, for example, you, may, you work, uh, uh, you make music for theater, it's much more difficult to switch from different moods or different uh, patterns. And in music, it can be really on a, on, a, on a split second, you can do it something else. And if it's possible to, to make this kind of sides in, within the music, then, then something is going to happen, which is my ideal of uh, playing this kind of uh, trio music. Yeah. So and you are interested in quick change. Not only, but it's no, one of the things. It's, it's, it's and then I'm interested too, in, and that's what you started with. Really play a uh, Tristano tune, for example. And, uh, and then try to, uh, to escape from it uh, through, through uh, how do you say that? By going into it. So it's not, I don't need to imitate it, but it's, uh, yeah, that's the other way of trying to, to get... Uh, uh, do you understand what I mean or not? 
Well, you can, you can, um, well, if you take it, it's, it's, uh, the, the music of Tristano anyway, it's just polyphonic, it's a kind of linear music. It plays only lines. And I'm interested in doing that kind of thing too. But then I, I try to make, a, a, um, it must be my own line in the end. But uh, my own line can fit to a, to a very uh, traditional jazz pattern from the bass and the drums, for example. I think that it, that, that can be possible. And that's, then I'm, I'm looking after that kind of thing. So, so it's a kind of collage, but not in time, not, not uh, uh, vertical, but it can be horizontal too. That's yeah. what I mean. You can have a, a real gluing bass line and, and a brushing a drum. And, I, and on top of that, there's a different thing which is uh, Monta, uh, what's that? Uh, Gemonteerd. Mm. On top of it. On top of it. Yeah. Uh, you understand what I mean? We. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not juxtaposed, but uh, superimposed. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of thing that I like to do too. So because if you if you say it, it's it's not everything. If you say if I would say that I'm interested in uh, in quick changes, that's not everything. Yeah. Would you, could you explain? What's the basic difference between, between the object and the variation? And then I have the next question after that. To me, it's, yeah. I think it's um, personal. If I'm talking about myself, I think it's a lot, a lot of variation. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 And that doesn't mean that improvisation is variation. It's just one of the... No, but there are just some difference, because I... I have thought a lot about it, it sounds very uh, pseudo-wise, but I mean, I'm not out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I start more and more to think that most of jazz music is variation, <coughs> in a way. That's a theme variation? Yeah. yeah. Well, but this can be but variation. But in, in other words, improvisation is a false word for it. If you put very, but it can very, be variation very in, very literal, a, yeah. in, in a, uh, a, lot of sort of, a lot of different uh, meanings. I mean, Don Cherry, for example, of uh, Ornith Coleman. Take Ornith Coleman. He yeah. was, that's not really uh, a theme with variation, but it's, it's variation still. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it, can, it, it, it doesn't have to be in the traditional, uh, but that maybe you don't mean it. In the sense, variation in the sense of ba ba da ba ba da da uh, what was that called by John Coltrane? The, the, the that you did, the, 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 there's one theme, you know, a love supreme, yeah, yeah. Love, and the whole album is about that one theme. Yeah. In fact, it could be called a variation, not in the classical sense. No, but no, it's no, a no. no but that's what I, what I, I like. Mean, no, no, that's, I mean, my, let me be more clear in going to the next thing, because I think that montage or collage is not possible without within a frame that you would name improvisation. Yeah. Yet it is possible within the frame that you would call variation. That's why I come to that question. Yeah. I don't know. I suggest that. something. I don't know if that's true. What would you, what, how, would you, how would you describe, for example, the Florence pieces like Cobra? Are those variation or are those improvisation? Because they're obviously montage pieces, right? It's yeah, but that, that, he was just, he was just uh, uh, both. Uh, yeah, uh, human uh, psychodrama. I, I think that's, that's a difference in a way, it, because it's, it's more the, the, theater, uh, theatric gesture of like things. I mean, you just say listen to the music. I mean, let's say let's say you don't have the visual. Yeah, you're not concerned with signing. You're just listening to an auditory tape. Yeah, I mean, if you say that it's more composed, it is more composed. Yeah. yeah, just having to rely on very specific musical instincts of individual musicians. It's the to other guests. I think it's a lot of variation because in his Cobra pieces he is uh, the conductor and there, is a, there seems to be a lot of freedom for the musicians which, which is not like that. Mm -hmm. Well actually in Cobra the, he's, he's kind of a coordinator but anyone can conduct the piece. No, so, so, no, well, well, that's not my experience I have to say. Well, no, there's, you can, there's I mean, it's, really it's, a possibility, a dissident possibility, but yeah, there's still he's a conductor. Right. But there, there are degrees of control and, and, and persuasion of the conductor and cover that. But in 
exactly. wouldn't get I don't know if I, music. because I I played in one of those pieces. But I don't that was with your group. I don't remember if it's if it was the, uh, if it was called Cobra. It doesn't make it doesn't uh, you say. Yeah, the name's But he's always working with this science, eh? Yeah. And that that's variation too. I mean, yes, but as basically it's, it's to, uh, the combination of different. Uh, it's always like dr uh, three, uh, for example, three signs, which together make mm -hmm. a very loud, slow right. uh, Caribbean music, something like that. No, right. that's, 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 uh, that was that was October okay. okay. meeting, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes. October. Yes. And, 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 uh, well, but that, that's variation basically, mm -hmm. because another combination makes very fast. Soft Caribbean music, for example, which is a variation of the first. Uh, well, I would say, I would call it variation. Mm -hmm. Well, I would call it all type of variation because he is, uh, in a way, uh, we did uh, a lot of uh, concerts with, with him with the Alton Ensemble. And my experience was that he um, acted uh, like a conductor mm -hmm. who is a composer in a quite some um, sometimes dictatorial way. Mm -hmm. So the seamless uh, uh, freedom for the musicians is a little bit, I thought, in the, well, what we, what you can say, Dutch and an anarchistic way, mm -hmm. a little bit fake. Oh, I, 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 agree agree completely. I, I, yeah. I think that if there's, an, if there's a, a mythology of freedom in those foreign pieces, challenges to the conductor as a supreme authority than a lot of his other pieces because there are these tactics that take place in it whereby um, there are musicians who, who are calling the attention of the conductor and indicating what they want to have happen next. And ultimately the conductor rules the time, but a lot of the suggestions for where the piece goes can happen in an interactive way, which is something different than typical conductor ensemble. It's a whole thing. Uh, that's oh, well. well, it doesn't matter because yeah. it's still, uh, in, a, in a certain sense, it's still uh, actual for me. But when I started with uh, composing in, in the start of the 70s, 73 or something like that, mm -hmm. then then I was very interested in, uh, in Roger Raphael, mm -hmm. the painter, the leading painter of his uh, group. And, uh, and then I thought something like that. I mean, I must explain. Uh, there must be some. It must be possible to, to take music as a, uh, a whole scala of realities too, like he did with real reality. So you have a lot of musical realities, and you can you can. Um, yeah, it must be more precise. That it's an easy way to explain it. If you if you take, for example, two musical realities, and you take some characteristics out of one some out of the other, and you put it together, you can have something very strange and maybe interesting. That, that was what I thought. And then, uh, so you combine uh, things which are not to combine, in fact. Like the timing of a serial musical piece with uh, bar music. I thought that kind of thing, I think, I remember. So you, you take the harmony of a bar piano player, the kind of harmonic thinking, 
you take the timing of it. How a serial composer would time this uh, serial? That's the same as Schoenberg. He composed serial on all kinds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no it's old-fashioned. No. <laughs> no. But then you can have something... Well, I had... Uh, I remember myself that I had very nice moments in investigating these kind of things. And then... Uh, yeah, you get... But I'm, I'm... You get further and further, so things are changing too. Like this superimposing thing is something else already. That you... What I thought then was... Um, uh, which is the, the smallest particle, that's maybe the same interview, the smallest particle of a, of a musical idiom in which you can still recognize the idiom. So you hear mm -hmm. immediately, this is uh, classical Baroque music, for example. What do you, how much notes do you, know, uh, do you need to, uh, to recognize it? And then you can put, then you can call that a molecule of uh, classical baroque music and you can make another kind of music with that you can use it as a, as a material that was the, the, the idea behind it which is not what I'm doing all the time but it's just a way of dealing with uh, material, with different materials which is Ravel doing in fact oh, he did it I don't know if he's still doing it because I'm not really up to date but he did that kind of things And then, uh, for example, which is, um, I, I wrote a string quartet, straight piece. And that piece, this kind of thing is happening. That there, there is uh, only a few moments in the piece which are fairly short. It's only maybe half a second or a second that you hear a real uh, classical string quartet sound. And then, uh, when I wrote that piece, I was really thinking of this uh, concrete. Uh, strips on the paintings of Ravel. So he had a, a big, a big uh, screen, of a like canvas, mm -hmm. and then there are all kinds of things on it. <coughs> there are a few white, how say that? What is that? A paal? No, that is it. It's not. It's just a uh, flak, a flak. Space. Uh, yeah, a very small space which is spared out. It's white. With, with black uh, lines to it. And you have maybe one of them, and then one is very far away, standing next to the road, and then you see it's a, it's a concrete uh, a pile. What's a pile? Like <laughs> <laughs> a pillow, yeah. Like a street not or something. So the one before, you, you know then, is another one of these things, but it's so near that you only see a, a part of it on the painting. Yes, that's that's uh, something in the string part, it's something like that is happening. Yeah, I thought yeah. 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 right. <laughs> uh, Is it uh, so far you have mentioned uh, with the piano trio the very well known names? Could it, would it be possible in your approach that you would do something with very unknown uh, piano trio? Uh, My piano brother suggested. Like piece yeah. three after P. Oh, yeah. H. Is it J? J, you say H. Oh, J? No, J. G. Nee, that's a G. Oh, J. J. P, J. At least he doesn't know. He doesn't know Pim Jacobs. Do you know Pim Jacobs? No. No, but it could be possible. Yeah. A piano player which interests me always very much is Joe Albany's name. And that was very strange, maybe you know him. I have, uh, I have a record with, of one march, uh, one march, sex player. It is accompanied by Joe Hobby, and this record is, from the start to the end, it's a complete uh, uh, misunderstanding. It is very nice to listen to it. And then you can, that gives ideas too, because this, super, this idea of superimposing, very often it's happening in reality, in music too, uh, because people just doesn't, uh, understand each other on a conceptual level or even on a level of time. And people are different, right? Also. But also I mean, in, also in, the, in uh, maybe also in the classical in the jazz piano no, trio that oh, the drummer is timing uh, I thought you were you know, <laughs> also. <laughs> <laughs> so 
maybe uh, this piece is also, and Joy Alden is not a real famous name, but, but I could imagine. But that's yeah. happening, uh, if you improvise, it's happening a lot. This kind could of you music. imagine also that you uh, have a program of um, no other examples of other people? Mm -hmm. That's who she wants to yeah. actually do. It could be possible, but this, what I'm doing now is just eating. The well, it's happening because I, I uh, we decided to do this trio, and then these ideas are coming to my head. Mm -hmm. So it's after, and I decided to start this trio to play all kinds of uh, adaptions of pieces by myself, which I wrote for bigger groups and for myself also solo pieces. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. nice to do also the solo pieces in the trio version. But now, now, well, the, the, the movie, if you, if you ask me to do a new program, so I, I was thinking of new pieces, and then right. this, this kind of ideas came out of me. So something else can happen later. <coughs> more, so, yes. Maybe more personal, more about myself. Well, it is about myself, but it's a, a different way of approaching yourself. So you know that person is. How are you going to structure the compositions that you'll do tomorrow? For example, You'll have a piece by Art Tatum. Well, are you going to use a, a, a classical structure, for example, a 32 bar head no. followed by an improvisation, or, or how does it work? No, this Art Tatum piece is uh, just, uh, I think it's like eight or nine, I don't know, I don't know exactly now. Very small parts of, I have uh, written solos with, which I'm studying for years already. So I know, I know the, the, the fragments very well. Mm -hmm. And then I, I choose fragments which are fitting in in the context of the piece that I wanted to make. So this, this, his fragments are just interpunctions in my piece. Do you, do you uh, put the, the fragments as you go on the fly, as it were? For example, you find yourself in a musical situation with three people, uh, and then the spirit will move you to quote a fragment, and then you'll... No, these fragments are really fixed, fixed in, in the piece. And it can happen that the way you you suggest now, but in this piece, it's really fixed. In the sense of it, a certain fragment happens at a specific time. Yeah. Is is it written out in the score? In the sense yeah. of uh, this fragment is to occur at this time and another fragment yeah. is to occur. But can, can you can you? It's real tune. It's a piece. Is it possible to cheat? In the sense of uh, can, can a can a fragment happen a bit later? No, okay. not in this piece. No. It's, it's a score. It's called a score. <laughs> it's a score. I could be wrong. It's a score piece. It's a, a small score. Okay. <clears throat> and the same I did with this piece on the Leonard Tristano. But then these are fragments which are out of his solo lineup. And then I, I took the fragments which are more or less 12 tone rows. There are fragments in it in which he uh, uses all 12 tones in a very short, uh, within one bar, for example. So I took out these fragments. Which sound very, uh, yeah. They they are they sound like far away from Tristano. Then it's very strange and because it's out of this. Uh, he does it in 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 this score scheme. But if you forget the score scheme, if you just take out this small fragment, you get a kind of atonal. Hmm. It could be a series on which you can make a piece, for example. And, and after the fragment. Uh, at that point, you vary the fragment. And you no, no, no. This, this Arteta piece is just... Oh, it's completely scored. It's so scored. But we do improv a lot of improvisation, but we do it in between his, his small fragments. Exactly. That's, what I, that's exactly yeah. what I meant. That so that's what I meant with the interpunction. The Arteta is the interpunction. Is the the, the Arteta fragments are like the commas in the text, for example. Or the, or the, the punta, the dots. And, then, so and that's what I... What I told, uh, what I said in the song. Yeah. But no, 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 it's an introduction. If you speak a text, you, you uh, put a comma in it first, or you write a text. And, and then this comma, the, so the text is myself and Ernst and, and Wim, the bass player, remember? And then this comma is our text. Yeah, and the text, how, how does that happen? The text is, is real, uh, it's only symbol sounds, and very fixed, very uh, static. And that was what I meant with the, these two poles in Athena's music. Yeah. We then exaggerated. It's very static, but what do you do then? Can you describe that? I just uh, played uh, myself, 
I, I only play really together with Wim. I saw I look to Wim, to the drummer, and he's playing all kinds of simple sounds. And always, he always way that's, that's that's all uh, uh, on a kind of agreement base, or that you you rehearse for it to get this kind of thing. So you develop a kind of rules, uh -huh. and the rule is then that more or less every sound dies out before the next one comes into the music. And I really play it together with him, and then we we hear, and, and there is a lot of surprise in it. What kind of sound is uh, because it mixes very well with cymbal sounds with uh, certain piano chords. And Ernst, the bass player, he is playing a kind of chromatic scale, which uh, is fitting in the in the tune that I know, and also in this arpeggiated fragment, because every note that he plays fits also in the arpeggiated fragment. That maybe is too far now for you, but uh, you can hear it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And he can join in with what I'm doing with the drummer, or he, he goes his own way. And tomorrow is premiere, so with my own pieces, I, I realize always that sometimes it takes two years even before you really have a, a, the kind of the kind of improvising which fits to that piece. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's in, in fact, it's maybe not in quite anymore. No. But that's not my, my, my first interest. No, but it's, it's just a way of producing your music. Yeah, music is uh, having your own group as, as a luxury. Yeah. A luxury to have, to, to have the possibility to work like a like hard now. Can, no. can in fact, I'm doing what I'm just doing now. I do it all, all mm. ready from the start. Yeah. I did it in 73 already. <laughs> but it's a nice way. <laughs> and Martha does it too, but it, it is not really the, the, we are not the inventor. The it's very old fashioned. Yeah. But it's very old fashioned because in the, in the late medieval times, when they started to, to write, composers played their own music. So yeah, it's the French for it. It's just a period in the start of this century that, uh, that composers forgot to, uh, to no, play. No, in the 19th century. Yeah. The 19th yeah, century are the yeah. uh, division in, in, in composers. Yeah. 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 But you must do your story too. Oh yes. Um, after this question. Um, I've heard how you're dealing with form in a vertical sense. Uh, how are you approaching form in a horizontal sense these days? Specifically for the piece tomorrow, and in general, uh, in your in your written compositions, it's always different. Mm -hmm. So it's diff difficult to, to give one explanation. Is it different? Always it's different, different for, for each piece. Different? No, it's for each piece. It, uh, each piece makes its own form, and it can it can be preformed. I mean, it can be in the score. The kind of sometimes it's in the score. What what kind of thing is going to happen? But often it's also in the if we are working with this kind of cues, for example, the, this, that the, the, the bass drum of the drummer the triggers, yeah. then you get a spontaneous form, which is interesting me very much because I'm uh, I'm coming out of free improvised music too. I did it in the seventies, like Martha, and then you get uh, more and more this. Kind of discontent. I don't know if Martha had this good thing, but it's kind of discontent. I remember for structure. Yeah, and then you can decide. Well, I make, I put structure on on this group, and they have to do this structure. That's one way, and I'm not against it because I'm a classical composer too. But another way, which is more nice to free improvising musicians, for example, is that you give kind of uh, gereedschap uh, tools. tools to the musicians, sounding tools to work on the form, so that they can work out the form on stage. And that's uh, what John Solomon tries to do too, I think. And then the signs are too. Only one more question on the form I try. Um, when you're putting in your classical uh, composer's hat, uh, what, what kinds of forms are you favoring in that case? 
Are you working with the same forms? For example, the spontaneous form that you were talking about. I don't have these forms in my head. A form is dictated by the... At the same time that from the idea a piece is growing, the form is growing. And then you have this problem that you must start over and over again. A lot of composers have this kind of thing. And a lot of composers do it the other way. They know before that a piece will last three quarters of an hour, for example. And then they have to fill in this form. But I cannot work that way. I just start from this idea and then I come to a moment that I realize that there must be a lot of things before. So the piece doesn't start on the spot where I first thought it was starting. There are that kind of things that a composer has. Well, a composer like Louis Andriessen, you know, he doesn't have it. As far as I know, he has a real graphic. The form of the piece is laying on his table. And he knows that a very big hit on the bass drum is going to happen on the 29th minute. After the 29th minute. And that's strange to me. Because I'm missing a kind of physical thing again. I'd like to follow your notes. Well, yeah. Composing is also a physical... You feel the timing, you feel. And that's the problem with a lot of modern composed music. That the timing is not felt. I think. I couldn't agree with you more on that. For example, with Stockhausen's first four piano pieces, you can tell that that guy played piano in a bar. Because the first four piano pieces are really... They really swing. Even though they're contemporary music. Whereas with some of the other... Music contemporary, we call them in France. You can also swing enormously. But too often, modern composers hide behind complexity for mediocrity. Yeah, or to hide a lack of timing, a feel for timing. If you don't know how to... A lot of composers, if they start to compose, they must invent a rhythm, for example. Or you must feel a rhythm. Like all early composers that felt rhythms, if they started to write. And then if you don't feel a rhythm, you just take the role of Fibonacci, for example. Which is a role of... Fibonacci series? Yeah. And then you can make rhythms out of it. And if you... If I hear... Sometimes I really hear it in the pieces. That the rhythms are really... Fibonacci rings. Yeah, Fibonacci rings. And that's a problem with a lot of... That's also the problem with composers who don't play anymore. I think. Because if you play, you... There is immediately this physical connection to the sound, to the music. To the timing. Do you agree with that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Y